ends up his 18th Test match hundred. I think guys have a laugh about it sometimes. I mean, we don't have a lot of conversations together. And when we do, the blokes say, oh, look, the, you know, the boys are talking sort of thing. So they have a bit of a laugh about it and find it a bit strange. I mean, it's, it's not your average, I guess, uh, brother relationship. But we communicate pretty well out in the middle. Before now, we haven't really spoken much about each other. Um, we don't show a lot of outward emotion. We don't, you know, go around holding hands and talking to each other in deep conversation one-on-one -on -one too often. But uh, I think deep down, we, we obviously care for each other. We know how each other's feeling. If, if the other one needs a bit of a helping hand, then I'm sure we'll be there. If, you know, if we need to stick up for each other, we'll definitely be there. When we look back, it was, uh, it was a good existence. It was, um, you know, we'd, I guess we didn't have a lot of money and we weren't uh, from a rich family, so we did it reasonably tough, but I think that was good in our upbringing. We shared everything, socks, clothes, um, was first in best dress, literally. Yeah, we were pretty close proximity to each other, so that's Perhaps why we ne we've never really roomed with each other on tour because we did it for 20 years and, you know, we're sick of seeing the sight of each other wake up in the mornings. We used to be late for school every day and I used to get in trouble as much as these guys, but I was ready always on time, so that, uh, that used to annoy me a little bit. But, uh... well, I do, we could never get in the bathroom. Mark used to take half an hour to get ready in the morning, so the oh. three of us get two minutes to get our hair ready. <laughs> so we're always struggling, always late for school, yeah, but... Yeah, um, can come. Yeah, look, that's one advice I give the people out there. If you've ever got twins, just send them. The rest of them separately don't have the same outfits. I mean, we had these purple outfits with a white belt, and then we had the cowboy outfits. I mean, some pretty embarrassing pictures we've got of us growing up over the years. All the kids when our neighbourhood had the bikes, but we had the scooters instead with the streamers on the handlebars. We were about 15, we had scooters. Yeah, and one of us had to go up the street to get the newspapers. And we used to hate that. Whoever got the name called out would have to drive up the street, and we copped it from all the kids down the street who were riding scooters down the street. We certainly liked to outdo each other. You know, whatever we did, we wanted to be better than the other one. But... I guess growing up, it was a little bit difficult for us because as twins, you're always being compared. Who's the better twin? Who's the better at school? Who's getting the better marks? Who's the better batsman? Who's got the most runs on the weekend? So that does lead to some sort of form of jealousy, I guess. There was plenty of fights behind the scenes and uh, some dodgy tactics in the bedroom. They were probably our biggest battles playing tennis matches, you know, and they'd always sort of go into three sets and they were desperate, you know, right down to the last point. So that's probably where we got our competitive nature from. I think I was marginally better too at tennis. I was... <laughs> I was actually the number one seed for the Liverpool region primary school and you were number two, so... Yeah, I was robbed. I was slightly better. It was a poor selection. We didn't know what a girl was. <laughs> That's not a lie. We, 19 years old, we're just cricket, sport, every day, every minute of the day. Girls just didn't play a part in our lives. <laughs> we didn't used to, you know, talk to too many girls. Yeah, look, I, I think Mum and Dad must have secretly thought they might have had gay twins on their hands on stage. But... <laughs> Look, that became a little bit of a concern to me. I thought, this is not normal, you know, we really need... I didn't have any females in the family. I couldn't wait for the day to have some girls in the house. And I thought, when they got to about 17, this is never going to happen. Mum was the only girl we knew at that age. almost remember having a girlfriend in primary school. Well, certainly having a kiss, anyway. But, uh, there you go. That, that, was, got a kiss. that was about it, yeah. I obviously remember when I first got picked for Australia in Test Cricket. And Mark was at Mum's place, and I walked through the door and... Must have looked a bit unhappy. Mum said, what's wrong? I said, well, I've just been dropped from the Australian side. And she said, well, she sort of started to take it pretty harsh and a few tears. And then she said, well, who's going to replace you? And I said, well, actually, he is over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, it's nice to know that um, when we finish our career that we are the first twins ever to play test match cricket. And we've played 100 test matches each and over 201 days. So that's something we would never have dreamed of in the backyard or growing up. So, yeah, that's great. And I think Mum and Dad are really proud about that. They don't say it a lot, but I'm sure that you know, deep down, they're, they're pretty happy that uh, their twin boys have made it. One day I'll pinch myself and realise I am their mother and they're actually playing for Australia. Oh, I feel proud of him for sure, because he's probably going down as one of the, the greatest captains of all time. So, so having him as your brother, um, yeah, it's very special.